Hi everybody. Today is the Savannah Lab. So today we're at Rollins Savannah Forest Preserve, which is in Grays Lake, just across Washington Street from the Grays Lake campus. And uh, you can see behind me, even though there's a mix of different ecosystems found at this site, behind me is a good example of an oak savanna. Uh, there's different types of savanna here in northeastern Illinois. Uh, we have oak savannas. And as you can see, a savanna is basically a grassland. Uh, there's a lot of open areas with grasses and forbs. Looks a lot like a prairie uh, with some scattered oak trees. So you can see there's a number of trees scattered around, which makes this very different from the prairie. Um, and in an oak savanna, obviously you're gonna have oaks. Although there's a number of red oaks behind me, actually, uh, the burr oak, which is a close relative of the white oak, is actually most commonly found in savannas. Uh, so we'll walk around, we'll see some different ecosystem types, but obviously our focus here uh, is on the oak savanna. This uh, grassland with scattered oaks, it has an open canopy, so that's contrasting it with the forest where there's a closed canopy, so there's more trees, they're closer together. Here there's an open canopy which allows grassland species still uh, to grow underneath and around them. So let's take a walk around, see what we can see. So as we walk along here, you might be thinking that it looks a lot like the prairie, and you would not be wrong. The savanna is a grassland, just like a prairie, and a lot of the species that we saw at the prairie are present here in the savanna. There's the same uh, grasses, there's big blue stem here, Indian grass, switchgrass. A lot of the forbs are here as well. Um, we saw Canada goldenrod at the prairie. I've already seen a bunch of that. Uh, this right here was common milkweed, which we didn't see at the prairie, but it is commonly found in the prairie. There's some compass plant right here. Right there which is a species that we saw in the prairie. So a lot of the same species will be found uh, in both the prairie and the savanna. There's a bunch of scat on the trail right here. When we look at it, we can see it is very full of hair and fur. So this is almost definitely coyote scat. We'll talk more about coyotes today, um, but I looked ahead up the trail. Just more of it here. So coyotes just eat their prey, small mammals or whatever they can catch, and they eat everything, bones, fur, everything. So their scat's gonna be full of that. But this would be somebody's dog. When you look at this, this is uh, not full of hair. So dogs eat dog food that we feed them, which is very, very protein rich. And so dog droppings, very different from coyote droppings. So Rollins Savannah, like uh, several of the other sites we've been to, is a restoration project. When I was in, gosh, probably all the way up until college, uh, I lived really close to the site and it was still being farmed, most of it. So a lot of the site is uh, being restored and it's still in the process of being restored. Uh, they're still sowing a lot of seeds of native species, bringing in uh, small, small plants that they're planting. Uh, there's still a lot of invasives that need to be gotten rid of, um, but that's okay. You know, it's a work in progress. They're putting a lot of uh, effort into getting the species out that shouldn't be here and getting the species in that they want here. So it's kind of fun to see how the site changes and improves over time because all that effort's put into it. I don't know if the microphone picked it up, but I could hear sandhill cranes calling off in the distance. Well, we're gonna head over in that direction. We'll see if we can get close and get them on video. So as part of the restoration of this site, 
they removed a lot of drain tiles. I don't recall if we've talked about it yet or not, but drain tiles are something that was commonly uh, put in the ground in Illinois uh, to drain the soil because we have very wet soil here so that farmers could grow crops in it. And by removing the drain tiles, it allows uh, some of the land to retain water. And so uh, wetlands can be a possibility. So obviously there's quite a large wetland complex in the middle of Rollins Savannah here. It looks like a lake, but it's pretty shallow. It's only a couple of feet deep. Um, so, you know, it's, it's more of a, a marsh really than it is a lake. And all around the edge, there's a lot of hydrophytes growing plants that, you know, can only survive in um, wet soil, hydric soil. Over there, you can see really nice mature oak savanna. So those oaks are all kind of spread apart. There's an open canopy. So there'll be a lot of grasses and forbs growing all around them, but very mature oaks. I mean, there's, there's probably some two to 300 year old trees over there. That's just gorgeous. Let's head over there. Let's get a closer look. You can see these oak trees growing right here are young, so the Forest Preserve planted these here. These have uh, pointy lobes on their leaves, so these are red oaks. The majority of savanna oaks are bur oaks and white oaks. We'll see if we can find any of those. I'm guessing some of these big mature oaks will be bur oaks. We'll go check them out. Oh, I just spotted a species here. It's a relative of species that we've seen before. I don't think we've seen this yet. So this is cup plant right here. It's in the genus Silphium. It's related to the prairie dock and the compass plant. And it's a little bit hard to see. You can just make it out. The leaves, just like those other species, are very thick and rough and sandpapery. But the leaves grow opposite each other on the stem and they kind of fuse together along the edge of the stem. And so the, the leaves basically grow like this and I don't know if that's showing up or not. And it forms a cup. And when it rains, that cup fills with water and that can be an important source of water out in a grassland for small birds and insects and small mammals. So that's kind of a neat plant. One of the challenges that the Lake County Forest Preserve District has, and really any land manager, is deer control. So we've talked a lot about uh, wanting to get rid of non-native species. We've talked about wanting to bring in um, and protect native species, but sometimes native species can overpopulate and they can actually become invasive. And a native species that we have problems with here in northeastern Illinois is white-tailed deer. White-tailed deer numbers are way above what they were historically, and they're above what the habitat can sustainably support. Remember, if a species goes above its carrying capacity, then it's going to uh, cause damage to its habitat and that habitat won't be able to support it at those numbers indefinitely. And that's basically where deer numbers are right now. So the Lake County Forest Preserve has to do things to try to control the deer population. And there's a few options. Um, students usually right away, they'll suggest, well, how about trapping them and moving them somewhere else? And that sounds really nice, but there's a couple problems with it. One, nobody wants the deer. There's nowhere that's low on white-tailed deer. Uh, so, you know, you have to have somebody willing to take them. And also, transporting uh, wild species is pretty stressful on them. So that's not an ideal solution. Uh, some places are looking into deer birth control. 
the deer are tranquilized uh, from a distance and then injected with long-term uh, birth control hormones. That's, that'll work, but it's quite expensive. Uh, what Lake County has historically done is we bait areas for a period of time to attract the deer and then the Forest Preserve District hires professional sharpshooters to cull the herd, to shoot some of the deer um, and reduce their numbers. And they generally do this um, at night or in the evenings. They'll close down the preserve so that uh, people aren't around uh, because we tend to be uh, in Lake County, a population that's a little less tolerant of hunting. So uh, it's something that the Forest Preserve District doesn't keep quiet. You know, they don't lie about it, but they don't necessarily publicize it. Now, right next door to Lake County in McHenry County, uh, that's a more rural county and it's a little more, the population is a little more open to hunting. They uh, also thin out their deer population by shooting them, but instead of paying a professional marksman to shoot the deer, they actually allow the public to hunt the deer on their county property um, and they charge them a fee for it. So Lake County pays to have their deer herd thinned out. McHenry County makes money off of getting their deer herd thinned out. But again, very different populations in each county. So we're kind of in the middle of this uh, more mature stand of oaks here. Let's see if I can find any sign of burr oaks or white oaks. Here we go, right away. So you can see this leaf is shaped very differently than that red oak leaf that we saw earlier uh, and has these more rounded edges. So this is either a burr oak or a white oak. Um, still a lot of um, red oak and pin oak leaves here. Um, there are other rounded edges. Here's another white oak. So there's a few of these around. Again, my guess is that these bigger trees are burr oaks and white oaks and some of the younger ones are red oaks. As you can probably imagine, since uh, savanna is a type of grassland, fire plays an important ecological role here, just like it does in the prairie. Uh, but there's some key differences between fire in savannas and prairies. Obviously, savannas have trees, uh, which prairies don't. So uh, one difference between the two is prairies generally burn more frequently than savannas do. Um, so uh, site managers that are uh, managing for a prairie, they might burn their site every one to five years. Whereas savannas burn a little bit more infrequently to give the trees time to, uh, to grow and to mature and get to a size like this where they'll be able to tolerate the fire. So in a savanna, the burning, you know, might only happen every five to eight or 10 years. So the frequency of burning is a difference. And then another key characteristic uh, in savannas is the trees that you find growing here. So as I mentioned earlier, um, burr oaks and white oaks are common in savannas. And these are trees that have really thick uh, bark. It's almost like a thick cork and that helps to insulate them from the fires. Uh, so trees that you find growing here have adaptations that allow them to survive the fires that do happen. So at first I parked over by the Drury Lane parking lot and everything uh, that I recorded up till now was over there. So the parking lot's way over on that side and then all those big old oaks over there. That's the area where we were. But it occurred to me that I left out one of the more important, not important, but interesting things about Rollins Savannah. So I drove over to the Washington Street entrance and let's go check out what they have over here. So one of the cool things uh, here at Rollins Savannah 
is the Lake County Forest Preserve District's native plant nursery. And you can see there's this whole area here that's fenced in, runs all this way, uh, where they grow tons of native species and then they harvest them for the seeds. You know, it, it used to be when grassland restorations first started being done, maybe not first started being done, but you know, 30 years ago, it was hard to get seeds and plants uh, when you were doing a restoration of a prairie or a savanna because there just weren't that many around and there, there weren't a lot commercially available. Nowadays, there's lots of nurseries that will sell them and uh, there's places online where you can buy the plants and you can buy seeds. Uh, but the Forest Preserve District uh, has this big nursery and they grow local variants. So plants that are, their lineage is from here they're adapted to Lake County. They have traits that uh, presumably do well here. Um, and they're able to save a ton of money too by growing all of their own seeds here. So this is kind of a, a neat uh, characteristic of Rollins Savannah. So that is the Savannah. Uh, just to recap, a Savannah is a grassland that does have scattered trees. Uh, there's an open canopy, so it's uh, very different from the forest. Here in northeastern Illinois, we typically have oak savannas. Uh, so, you know, basically think of tall grass prairie species with some scattered burr oaks and white oaks. So, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it interesting, and I'll see you for the next lab.